welcome back to Think About These Things. Today I wanted to talk to you about curriculum. I know it's kind of late and a lot of you might have already started your school year, but I thought I would share with you some of the curriculum that we're using. Um, now before I get started, I want to tell you that behind me on this table there is a lot of curriculum. I like curriculum a lot and I use a lot of it. And my friends actually make fun of me because I use so much curriculum. But um, I really believe that no curriculum is perfect. So we do a lot of a little of this, a little of that. I I know a lot of people like to pick like one thing like sunlight or my father's world. that They like to um, stick with one curriculum all the way through. Um, but I kind of like to take the highlights of a lot of different kinds of curriculum and put them together into what I think are the best things for my girls to be doing. I also am somebody who looks for a spiral curriculum, meaning that I'm okay with repetition. I like for us to go over it and over and over it and just kind of spiral up. So I'm okay with a little bit of repetition and different ways of saying things like one curriculum might teach it one way and another curriculum might teach it another way. And I like that because I think that every kid learns differently. Um, one of my professors in college used to say to us all the time that a teacher's manual is not a cookbook, meaning that none of, it's not a perfect recipe. You can't put a little of this and a little of that and, and not every single kid is going to come out the same way. Meaning that, you know, just because it worked for one of my kids, it might not work exactly for my other kids. So in a classroom full of 20 kids, they all are learning in different ways. So a recipe is not going to work. And some kids might not like things. Think of it like as you're cooking. You might not like onions or olives in your family, so you might take that out of your recipes. It's the same thing when you're teaching with kids. You have to pick and choose what you like because not one curriculum is going to be perfect for every single kid that you have, even in your family. So um, I do a lot of putting together lots of different things. The other thing that I do is when I am picking curriculum for my kids, um, Elise is a workbook kid. She likes workbooks, where um, Breely is not so much. She is a hands-on learner. Um, so I look for, you know, things that are visual, things that get them up and moving for kinetic, and things that are auditory for their hearing. You have to look for all the different steps um, for the different learning. So I do do a lot of different kinds of curriculum for that point that I want them to be having all of the different kinds of learning so that you can hopefully master it. And that's some of the things that I look for when I'm looking for curriculum. So let's go ahead and look at the curriculum. I have it laid out on a table and I'm just gonna go by subject by subject and tell you about the curriculum. Some of it's old, some of it like we've done for years. Some of it is new this year, so I'm not quite sure. And I'll just tell you what um, is working for us so far. So let's go ahead and turn around the camera and look at our curriculum. This is all of our curriculum for this year. This is the first and fourth grade curriculum that we are using. And let's go ahead and start up here. This is our language lessons. Um, this is called First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind. This is my teacher's manual for level one, and then Elise's workbook for level four. And we have done this for the past three years. We started this when Elise was actually in second grade, and we did level one and level two that first year, and then she did third grade, and now she's on the fourth one. Level one and level two are very like short, easy lessons. Um, it starts with everything from like parts of speech, like nouns, pronouns, um, and there's some memorization work, like the months of the year, and um, some poetry. It has um, paintings and art where you kind of have them describe it to you. There's also some bits and pieces of stories where you read to them for listening comprehension. There is, like I said, parts of speech. I really like this a lot. It's a great way to start learning about language. And then for Elise, it gets more in depth where she has a workbook. And so we teach the lessons and we, this is my actual like time that I spend teaching her. It gets into diag diagramming, it gets into tons of different types of speech. 
it is somewhat scripted and um, this is the teacher's manual and I'll just show you what's kind of inside here. It gives great questions to ask, to remind, to ask. And some of this stuff I know and then some of it you kind of need to be reminded of. And so it's really nice to have it here because it makes you confident in teaching them. We do this three times a week and um, it, this is my actual sit and do lessons with the girls. Now in partnership with this is writing with ease. This is level one and this is level four. Honestly, I don't consider this a writing curriculum. I consider this more a, uh, like a guided reading. This is literature based. And so like the first week was Little House in the Big Woods. There's some Caddy Woodlawn. There's some Charlotte's Web. There's a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. There's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And so that's um, what Breeleys are based off of. And the leases are based off of The Emperor's New Clothes. This week she's learning about the, the Renaissance period, Little Women, so Black Beauty. There's lots of different types of good literature. But, um, it has things like this that they, they write like a little um, sentence that would be like a highlight of what we read or sometimes it has dictation and sometimes it has um, tell me like the summary so um, a friend of mine asked me why I do dictation and we actually do dictation with their spelling because we I like that one because it uses their spelling words but dictation is awesome for say you take notes while well when they go to college or if they're gonna sit in a meeting or maybe notes in um, church or something like that. So I do think that dictation is important. Elisa's is a little bit more in depth. Would, she does the reading and then it has questions and then it has a summary. So her stories would look like this. And then um, there's questions that you ask. This would be her writing a summary of it or maybe a favorite passage or highlights, maybe she wants to talk about the um, main characters or what the um, problem and solution was. Whatever it is, this is what she would write on this page. This is again the dictation. Usually I have her write a summary on the dictation or I give her the dictation and I do like a model writing lesson and so we write it together. I write it on the board or a piece of notebook paper and she writes it on here. And so the stories last two days and this is a four day a week program. So we do it Monday through Thursday. Then we get into their, um, in their language that they do independently. We do, this is level one and level four of daily language review. This is things such as putting things in ABC order or making sure that your sentences have proper words um, word usage or capitalization, periods, question mark, commas, which word does not belong, um, different things like that. That would be what the first grade level is. And Brilli and I do right now are doing it together, but she eventually will do it independently. Elise does it completely on her own. So she would have to find um, like the subject or she would have to find the verb. She would have to um, look up a word and find me um, a different word that would go in its place. Or these she would have to find like an adverb. She would have to find the um, different meanings of the word light. She would have to again do um, correction of spelling and things like that. So this is just very short. It's one to five questions every single day um, and she would just do some practice of the things that we are learning in first language lessons. We also do a Becca. A Becca is not the core of our curriculum, but I do think it's good, um, more so for the younger years. I like their phonics. So we do letters and sounds. These are empty, they're all torn apart, but we do letters and sounds, which are the phonics, and then um, the actual language, and these work well together. She does three or four of these pages a week also. And then Elise is doing the grammar, the writing and grammar. And this is her independent work. This is kind of how I check to see if she's getting what we've done together in these books. So we do use language A for fourth grade and letters and sounds and language one when we are doing their independent work um, of just different phonic sounds and stuff. I truly believe when you're teaching your kids to read, 
you have to do word families, you have to do phonics, you have to do sight words. I kind of think that all philosophies are useful and necessary, so that's why I like to do the um, a phonics with the a Becca. Um, however, when we do the readers, last year for kindergarten we did Bob Jones readers. This year we're doing, we do have the Becca ones. I like um, these because it does build off of the sounds and things that she's learning in here. But we also have the Horizons books that I use with Elise. So we, um, she reads to me and then it has the, comp um, the comprehension questions at the end. So we've been reading both of the phonics and the Horizons readers. For, a, for Elise's reading, we she does a lot of independent reading. I do look at the Sunlight um, reading list and I also use Google and I kind of look and see what are some great books for her to be reading, but she honestly picks a lot of books on her own. Um, this is one that was actually set out on my desk this morning and she has finished this one. She loves anything that has to do with horses. So that's what the series is about. She also loves Nancy Drew. This is her newest obsession. She is flying through Nancy Drew books. We um, buy these a lot of the time at vintage markets. We, our family loves to go to different vintage shops and markets and things like that. So she is always on the lookout for old vintage books, which I love. And Nancy Drew is kind of the newest series that she has discovered. So she will go and she'll buy as many as she can afford or as much money as I will give her. And she will buy a ton of Nancy Drew. She, she's also bought some like Bobsy Twins. There's a nurse. I can't remember what the nurse books are, but uh, she, she really likes those. So she loves to go find good old books and sit and read those. Um, and then I pulled out, again, these are the Mandy series. These kind of relate back to what we're gonna be doing in history because they're all based in North Carolina, in the Asheville area, in the mountains. So this is the Mandy series that I loved when I was in fourth grade. This is another thing that I loved and um, we're going to read this one together. It's called In Grandma's Attic and there's a series of these. We also do, we started Little Women last year, so we are going to finish Little Women and then do Little Men. So I do try to find good classical literature that we do read. We've read things like The Little Princess. We have read Pollyanna. We have read The Secret Garden. We read a lot of good classic books. Um, and then we also do some of these um, reading units that this one is from Confessions of a Homeschooler and this is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So I find units like this. I, I also buy a lot of these literature units. This is for Stuart Little, The Courage of Sarah Noble, um, The Door in the Wall, The Boxcar Children. I love to go and get these type of books and then we read and it has vocabulary and it has good comprehension questions. So I really love when we read a book, I like to see if they have these literature units that we can um, combine them with. Um, now I told you before that I don't really consider writing with ease a writing. The next step would be writing with excellence, which I think they start in fifth or sixth grade. But um, for new this year, we started Write Shop. This is Breely's, hers is the Write Shop Primary Book A. and. Elisa's is the first Write Shop Junior, Book D. And so far, I am really liking this writing curriculum. Um, this is a lot of model writing that I've been doing with Breely today. She drew a picture of her favorite animal. And then tomorrow, we're going to write details of why it's her favorite animal. So she drew a bunny today. And tomorrow, she's gonna tell me that she likes them because they're cute and cuddly or whatever her reasons might, might be of why they're her favorite. Elisa's so far, her writing looks excellent too. She is doing um, parts of a letter, which we have actually done before, but I really like all the activities that they have to do with it. So, so far, I am really liking Write Shop. For their spelling and handwriting, we use a reason for spelling and a reason for handwriting. The first thing that they do is they listen to this story, and this story works for both curriculums and it is based upon a verse, and it also has their spelling words in the story. So, for example, I'll show you Elisa's. Hers is in cursive, 
and um, she just started cursive last year. But every single week they have a verse and at the end of the week they write the verse out and then they have these border sheets and so they put it on the border sheet and um, you can display them. We tend to like display them for a little bit and then file them. But um, they write out their verse every single week then and their spelling Breeley's is print. Um, hers are all torn out. They are in her files. So this is her spelling. And again, they're just easier. For at least for spelling, they have, this is lesson 15, so they have, she has 18 words, and this would be their verse that they connect back to their handwriting. So this is the scripture verse, and so we do, on Mondays, we do a first look where she writes the words, and then she corrects the ones that she missed. And then she does these, they put them into the blocks to see, you know, big letters, small letters, tall letters, short letters. Um, so she does that on Mondays. On Tuesdays, we do spelling activities. The first spelling activity that she always does is her spelling spot where she writes them on sentence strips and she puts them in this pocket chart. She also writes it in her planner. And then this is um, some activities that they suggest. Sometimes we do the ones they suggest. Sometimes we do um, all of those um, activities in our drawers that I showed you in our tour of our homeschool room. So this one is put them in alphabetical order. This is to spell the one toothpicks. And I really like how it gives them fun activities to make it fun and um, just not writing their spelling words over and over. So this is what we use for spelling and handwriting and again I love how these work together. We also do Explode the Code. This I did buy the book one um, when they were in kindergarten they did ABC and then we start book one and um, one and a half usually is what I try to do for first grade and I think Elise is on either book five or six I can't remember in fourth grade but um, this year we we're going to try to do it online. The other thing that she is doing online, Elise is doing, is Wordly Wise. We did the book last year and I've decided that I want her to try to do that online to get some computer skills in also. So she will be doing Wordly Wise and Explode the Code online. Um, for science this year, first semester they are doing a Becca science. They are not doing the whole curriculum. They are basically just taking the reader and they are, I'm reading with um, Freely and Elisa's reading on her own and we are just going to do this until Christmas. Um, I am letting Elise do the tests and quizzes but she is doing them open book. I think it's important for her to realize that she can find the information and what she's reading. So she does a lot of that um, open book and then we go over the answers together. After Christmas we are going to be doing Apologia exploring creation with astronomy and I'm really excited about doing this one. We did get the notebook so this will be Elisa's and then the junior will be for Breely and it just has all the different activities to do, some questions. Um, I got also the kit that has some little experiments to do with them. So we're excited about doing this. We are going to be doing this with friends so I think it's going to be a great um, science unit. When I was in fourth grade, we did science and I still vividly remember it. It was one of my favorite things that we did. So um, that's kind of why I wanted to do a space unit. For math, Elise does two math curriculums. She does teaching te textbooks on the computer. We really like teaching textbooks. And then she is doing Horizons Math 4. Now Horizons Math 4 is a little bit ahead and then they say that teaching textbooks is a little behind. So I think in between she's kind of averaging out. She like how this challenges her. This gives her more of a detailed instruction and just gives her confidence. So I like her doing both of them. Um, she does teaching textbooks probably three to four times a week and then she does Horizons every day, five days a week. Breely is also doing Horizons and I pulled out um, A Life of Fred just to do some extra stuff with her. I almost this year decided to do Saxon. I really like Saxon math. I like that it's very hands-on and really likes that a lot. But again, I like how Horizons challenges them. 
So for right now, I decided to stick with Horizons, but I really do suggest Sex and Math. I think it's a great curriculum also. For history this year, the first part of history, we are doing the states. I got them both this coloring book and every day we pick a state and we are coloring it and um, learning the bird and the flower and the tree and basically really is learning where it is located and um, Elise is working on she's learned where the states are already so she's reviewing that and she is learning the capitals so that is what they are working on for the first part of um, history these are another thing that I got while we study the different states we i actually was given these and i do not have all 50 states but it's like a highlights um state magazine and so like in there there's like a little story and then like hidden pictures um it has some word searches and just different things this is all about arizona but it has different um questions you can ask them so I have, I would say most of these, we're probably missing like five of, maybe five to 10 of the states. But then we are going to move into the election. And so I have all this stuff that we have ready to go for the election. These are some activity cards. This is a little workbook, some flash cards, another book to, that has little facts about the um, different presidents. So again, at least I would like to have some knowledge, maybe not 100% memorization, but um, some knowledge of the past of the presidents and then what the election process really is since this is an election year. After we have finished um, all of the United States and the election um, for the fourth grade year is, you know, your state history project. So I, when I was in fourth grade, we actually lived in Virginia. So I still have my Virginia state project. So I'm excited about doing the North Carolina state project. Again, I have um, some coloring books. Here's a coloring book that I got her. Here is some history projects that for North Carolina that I got. And this is like a little facts book. This is by Carol Marsh, and then she has also all these real life mysteries, these national mysteries, not real life, but they're at real places. So um, this one is, you know, in the Outer Banks. This one is the Lost Colony. This one is about Blackbeard the Pirate. And we've already read the one that is based out of Biltmore. And I might pull that out, but we're going to try to do these three books this will be our reading that we're going to do along with all the different activities i also bought these books we live in the charlotte area so here's some cool stuff about charlotte um the north carolina colony here's another book um we're going to probably go uptown they have um like a history walk that tells tells you the history of charlotte so I think that we are going to try to do that this year. I'm really excited, me personally, about reading and learning about North Carolina history. I think it's going to be really fun and really exciting. So I, I'm really excited about that. Once we have finished all this, this is a lot, so I don't know how much we're going to get into it, but I have planned to, once we have finished, we're going to start Story of the World. We decided I already have the um, book and I already have the CDs and everything, so we are going to be doing Story of the World. And I'm excited to start this um, curriculum also. I've heard such amazing things and this is by that same company, which I love. So um, I'm excited to start Story of the World. For Bible this year, one thing our family is doing is this book called I Can Learn the Bible. It's the Joshua Code for Kids. There's the Joshua Code for Adults, but this one is for kids, and it's 52 um, scriptures to memorize. So one a week, we're going to be working on memorizing those as a family. But our main Bible, I'm concentrating on this book. It's called In This House We Will Giggle, and there are 12 chapters, and there are 12 different um, characteristics, love, the, we're working on joy right now. Um, there's forgiveness, I think, grace, um, perseverance. And so it gives you a verse again to memorize and then like little games and activities that you can do, questions you can ask your kids to put it into real life um, practice. And so far, I am really loving this book. It's called In This House We Will Giggle. And I think it's great. 
The other thing that we do have for Bible is um, this positive action curriculum. And we use this much more so for kind of like a devotional for the girls. Um, this is the first grade. This is the fourth grade. Elise does hers basically independently. And um, Elise, I, with really, I do do some of the activities with her. Um, I like the stories. I like how it gives them real life application. Um, and I really like how these work. Now with um, these, they've heard their, the Bible stories a lot of times over and over and over again. So I try to make it fun. I let them watch on the Bible app or I pull out a VeggieTales or I look on YouTube and find a Bible story for them to watch. Um, and then we also do read it. We use the Jesus um, Bible and things like that, that we um, read the stories together. But um, they use these, like I said, much more for like a little bit of a devotional and just making what they're learning about and Bible stories that they've always learned and applying it to their life. Another thing that we are doing somewhat with friends is we are doing Keepers of the Faith. Um, and this is a very religious, kind of old school <laughs> um, curriculum. We are not doing it 100% how it is in the book. We are basically making it like a home ec class. So it has everything from like flower arranging to horseback riding, choreography, and then it has canning. It has tons of different activities just to do for like, kind of like a home ec thing. We're going to do it with friends and you can actually buy them badges. And um, they have like a little, like a Girl Scout like sash with badges. So we think that this is gonna be lots of fun to do for our art, which has been awesome. My girls have loved it. We have this home art studio and um, this is the first grade and this is the fourth grade and we're actually doing one a week and so we should be able to for them working together finish both the first grade and the fourth grade this year um, i figured instead of just having really do this and just at least do this that they could just work on it together and um, if it gets a little too complicated for Breely, I'll give her another art project thing to do while Elise does it. But um, they have so far really, really liked this curriculum. It comes with like two boxes full of, well, you can buy just the CDs or you can buy the art supply kit, which has so much art supplies in it. And um, they've been really excited about this art curriculum. They also once a week do typing. This is um, much easier for Elise than it is for Breely, but I just want them to be on the computer and learning some computer skills. And then um, Elise, my mom has been working with Elise on piano, but she, I also bought this, it's called My Piano. And um, it's like a CD-ROM, she puts it in, and puts it beside her at our piano, and she's learning, you know, bass clef, treble clef, and different scales and things like that. She seems to really like it. For Spanish, this is um, Spanish and more Spanish, and there's a CD. They listen to songs, and then um, there's a CD. And then there's um, little, there's the words, and then little phrases, and it asks them little questions and things. So we've been doing that together. We did this a little last year also. And then I also got this. Um, Spanish it has like flashcards and another CD for them to listen to I also have found online it's called salsa Spanish I believe and there's little shows that they can watch so there it all is there's all of our curriculum for first and the fourth grade I'm gonna write a detailed list of all of the curriculum that we use and put it on my blog, thinkaboutthesethings.com, so you can have a list of everything that we are using. So that'll be linked down below.